What's up? As you guessed, I'm back. And also, um, I'm going to make this other <clears throat> design that I sort of made. A nice piece of wood here. See, like, the grain's looking pretty nice. This is going to be more of a step-by-step -step tutorial, like a how-to video. Um, I think that I've done enough of these just, like, build-alongs, and I want to put a little bit more explanation into a lot of the videos that I make. Um, so uh, we're going to start with this one, and this one um, I'm going to basically <clears throat> talk about what each individual step is like as I'm doing the slingshot. So you guys can get more of an idea of like the sort of process that I go through. Hopefully this video won't be too long though because a lot of times I end up getting like two hours or three hours of footage on these videos just because I'm doing a lot of explaining it and I have a tendency to ramble. So we're gonna try really hard to make this video a little bit shorter than what it should be. So first, you gotta pick a slingshot frame. You gotta pick a Y frame where you can take a template that you've made and you can put it over and you can tell that it will work. Sometimes you end up getting a, a chunk of wood that's maybe one side is real messed up or something and it doesn't quite fit in there and you have to like turn it and make sure that it's gonna work. That's why I like these huge forks because they almost always work with almost any design that you want to make. This is the design we're going to make today. It's a little bit different than my typical Yeti design. I've yet to name this, although I can't take full credit for it. It's based off some other forks that I've seen, but um, I did make this up. I, I did freehand draw this. So um, we're going to do this one, and there will be plenty of wood left in that one. So lately, one of my favorite things to do ugh, is to take my angle grinder and use a flap sanding wheel with a real low grit, like 40 grit, to flatten out the section of the slingshot frame, flatten out the section of the fork that I want to be able to draw the template onto. <laughs> that does a couple of things. Number one, it makes a nice flat surface but it also opens and exposes the grains that are going to be in the wood. So you can take a little bit more time to decide exactly where in the fork you want to trace the slate shot. Okay, so once you got it nice and flat, you can trace the outline. This is also a good opportunity for me to show you the grain and the wood. And you might not be able to see it that well on camera, but boy, is that grain beautiful. I mean, it is just beautiful in this wood. A few cracks and stuff. We'll get to those later. Don't worry about those. But that is going to be our slingshot. Let's cut it out. Okay, so I had to pause for a little while after I cut um, the frame out on the scroll saw because I, f I messed it up. And it wouldn't be that bad, except let me show you the tips of the forks here. This fork, I really jacked. But 
this is a good learning experience for me. And it's a good moment to remind my future self that even when you screw up, it's not that big of a deal. It's really not. And it's not for a few reasons. Number one, I have any number of ways to fix that. I can glue it. I can use some epoxy resin. I can use some epoxy glue. I can cut the fork tips off and glue new fork tips on. Um, I can pin stuff. Uh, I, have, I have a thousand ways to repair this problem. Um, but it's a learning experience for me because it's a reminder, I should say, because I got so mad that I went and grabbed another fork and I was just going to start this video over. But I decided that in the interest of full transparency and so that I can watch this video in the future and say, see, you did this and it worked out. I think, uh, I think we're just going to say F it and keep working on it. See what we can do with it. See what I can do with it. And that's the real test is when stuff goes wrong. What, what do you do? Who are you? You know, what kind of a person are you when things don't go right? Let's get going. Okay, so this is what I got so far. Just using the belt sander there. You can see it's still uneven in here and the fork here is just jacked. So I'm going to even this side out just a little bit and then we're going to go fill in this, this gap right here inside there with some epoxy glue. And then I think that we will, for the most part, I think that we'll have saved it. All right, so let me show you what I got going here. Um, so I'm going to create like a, a cup out of duct tape. And then we're going to pour epoxy into the cup in, inside here. Looking at them, this needs a little bit more... Um, it needs to be built up a little bit more just on that side. But I don't think it needs to be built up that much. Okay, so before we pour the glue into there, what I'm going to do is take my Dremel tool and run a bunch of streaks, try to match some of the grain. I'm going to dig out uh, with like a piece of a drill or something, some of the spots where there's like an eye. Um, dig out this bottom part, dig out this front part, just some of the spots that I don't like. And then what we're going to do is when we mix the epoxy and we pour it into there, we mix the glue up and we pour it into there, we're also going to fill in all the gaps that I made around the slingshot, and then we're going to make them all the same color, basically. Um, and what that should do, at least I think, <laughs> is um, it should give the cool effect that there's like a whole bunch of little spots of um, repair even though they don't need it. So we're gonna use a uh, little metal bit. Something you should take into consideration before you apply any kind of chemicals to the wood. If the frame isn't dry, then you're going to need to um, put it in the microwave or properly dry it. And you can do that in any number of ways. One of the quickest ways is just to throw it in the microwave for like a minute at a time. Let it dry and cool um, in between bursts. Usually let it dry for like 5 to 10 minutes in between. 
uh, each burst. But basically, you want to make sure that this is dry. This frame is pretty dry. It's been sitting in my basement for probably a month or two, uh, right next to a dehumidifier. So it's it's plenty dry. Um, I also only ever cut from dead wood anyway. So typically, the only time I ever really have to dry out a fork is if it's freshly fallen. Anyway, you can see I got some divots and dips holes that I cut up with the Dremel tool and we're going to fill all of that in with epoxy including this spot. Now just filling it in with epoxy it's going to turn like a whitish kind of creamy looking color uh, if you use to, uh, epoxy glue. If you use really nice epoxy glue sometimes you can get them to turn out kind of like a clear color. Now, what you can do is, the same as any kind of uh, epoxy, you can mix in mica powders or even liquid colorants, although with the liquids, you have to be very, very careful about how much liquid you actually put into a two-part epoxy glue, because if the glue, if the epoxy doesn't maintain uh, its integrity, it's not going to last. It'll, it'll actually fall apart and come out of there. But with these mica powders, the powdered stuff, you can put as much as you want in there. But what you have to worry about is I'm using five minute epoxy. If you mix five minute epoxy, you literally only have five or 10 minutes to get it where you want it before it starts to harden. With the mica powders in there, it seems like it makes the reaction go even faster. So what you should do is mix the epoxy really quickly together in equal parts, put your mica powder in and get and mix it really fast and then put it in your crevices really fast because if you don't do it quick it it just will not work out how you think it's going to work out and, and you'll have to you'll have to make a double batch All right, guys, so do a little bit of a reveal here. The glue is hard enough that we're going to start to work with it. You should let it harden fully, but I'm pretty impatient, so I'm not going to. But um, you can see that. We're just going to take this off here. There we go. Got yourself a full fork there. Okay, so I got the sides pretty well cleaned up, front and back, pretty well cleaned up. Still haven't really done much inside the fork, but what I'm going to do now is still try to allow that to dry more and harden, and then I'm going to start taking the edges down. So I'm going to step outside and show you what I got going on here. Pretty well rounded. And I think the rest can be done 
with the hand tools. Alright, so now that I'm cleaned it up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a file and I'm going to take off all the edges um, so there's no sharp edges. I'm going to work inside the fork gap a little bit with the file because uh, you have a lot more control with the file and you can make finer uh, sort of details with it. And then basically, um, once I get it to where I'm pretty happy with the shape, I'm going to go ahead and start to sand it. And the sanding will take care of a lot of the imperfections. You'll still be able to shape it with the sanding, although not quite as quickly uh, as you would be able to shape it with a file or, or, you know, say like the belt sander. And then what will end up happening is um, we'll start to uh, work through so a couple of grits. I don't think we'll get through that many. Honestly, I think I'm going to do maybe a 120 grit and then I'll jump right to like a 320 grit. I'm not a huge fan of spending a bunch of time working your way up through the grits when um, a proper 320 grit sandpaper actually is perfectly fine to remove plenty of the imperfections and still make it seem like a natural slingshot but this is what we got so far so that's the back side side view and the front side i'm pretty happy i'm glad that i stuck with this one because that fork is going to look kind of silly but um with all the other markings in there uh, i think this is actually going to turn out really really nice so let's get to filing and then we will sand and then we'll see what we want to do as far as the finish goes <clears throat> all right all this sandpaper it's about uh, three full sheets and this is what we're left with So it's a real thin, kind of kind of skinny slingshot, I guess. But it's going to be just as strong uh, as any slingshot that I've made, even remotely recently. So the last step that we're going to do to this is basically uh, wiping it down with uh, a paper towel and some rubbing alcohol. And that's going to take up a whole bunch of the dust that's left on here. Uh, and it's gonna we're going to try to clean up. Um, the spots like that where there's obviously there's just a little bit of dust left in a little tiny crack. Then we're going to coat it in two-part epoxy and let it hang to cure at least for a day. And then we'll prob I'll probably end up having to put another coat on it because the bare wood likes to soak up a lot of the epoxy. So let's show you that in a sec. And after you put the first coat on, when you put when you're putting the first coat on, you really want to rub rub it in for a little for a little bit. This stuff doesn't even get tacky for like I don't know twenty or thirty minutes. Um, and the wood is going to soak up a lot of the epoxy that you are that you're putting on here. Um, the wood's porous, so that's going to happen. That actually helps to stabilize the wood a little bit. So if there are any weak spots, hopefully the epoxy will sort of glue it up. Um, but because it's going to drink a bunch of it, you're going to have to sort of put two coats on on the first coat. So once you've got it rubbed in pretty good, you just keep rubbing and keep moving the epoxy around and making sure that it's spread on every little surface. You're going to notice that after a minute or two, you're going to need more epoxy. 
Man, I love it already. And then, once you're done rubbing it in, what I do is I use a thumbtack on the end of a string, and I poke the thumbtack into the bottom of the handle. Not very deep, just deep enough that it'll hang on its own. Then, I like to take my thumb and forefinger, stroke down the fork. Helps to smooth all the epoxy out. It makes it much, much easier to finish because if you don't it's like slide down you might get little bubbles and stuff and then when you go to when you go to grab it and shoot it you'll feel it and what you want is like a glassy type of finish but okay guys so i couldn't wait anymore i got it banded up i put another coat of epoxy on it uh last night so it's been about probably 20 hours or so um but it's plenty hard you know it's scratch proof at this point it's gonna cure for another day or two but you guys can see how we finished it up. You can see where I put the mica powders in there too. Got it banded with the yellow 0.65 Falcon bands, which are pretty fast. I'm really liking these bands. Um, they're lasting a long time too. I've probably gotten, a, I don't know, 200 shots or 300 shots out of a couple pairs uh, already um, I'm shooting at that <laughs> I don't know how good you can see that but it's a it's a it's a steel can a tin can inside my catch box and we're going for a uh, we're going for a 25 yard shot here so let's see what I can do this time at 25 yards with good bands Close. Woo! Smacked it. If I can get a couple more in like that. Woof. Was just a little high on that one. There we go. Ooh, sounds like it's inside the can. There we go. The last time I was practicing this 25 yard shots, I was using TheraBand Gold. It's not a good idea, man. Ooh, a little high. A little high. We can compensate. There we go. Ooh, caught the edge. Hopefully you guys can hear that so you know I'm not messing around with you. Oof. That looked like a hit, but no cigar. Starting to drop a little low. Damn, that looked like a good one too. I don't know if you guys can even see that. I got uh, four more balls, so let's try to hit it. Let's see how many times we can hit it out of four. Yikes. Definite miss on that one.
There's one. That was a nice solid hit too. Anyway, shooting a little bit better with this one, thankfully. Um, <laughs> the last time, man, I must have take I must have took 20 shots or something. I only hit it like three or four times. These bands are much faster than Theraband Gold, so it's a flatter trajectory. And uh, this is more my style with the nice wide gap in there. But anyway, I wanted to show you guys that. I want to get this video up and edited. Rainy day, it's cold. And if you guys do want to purchase these uh, these bands, there's a link in the description for you, okay? Appreciate you watching. See you next time.